Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be looking at something every single content creator should keep an eye out for whenever they do their content creation. Almost every single digital device has a display of some sort these days, and I guess that's just how far technology has progressed. However, have you ever wondered why a video or picture that you view on your television suddenly looks a lot different on your smartphone? No, really. If you want to test this out, play this exact YouTube video on your television and open it on your smartphone right now you notice that the colors look different and overall the picture may look completely dissimilar. So what's going on here? It is still the same video, isn't it? So why does it look different on your smartphone? Well, it turns out that there are a number of factors that can affect this. The first one of which is the display technology that is being used on whatever screen that is in question. To make a very long and complicated story short, there are two major display technologies used in the modern day, and they are LCDs and OLED panels. OLED panels have high contrast ratios and very punchy and saturated colors. LCDs tend to be less saturated and exhibit lower contrast ratios. As a result, side by side, an image will look dull and washed out on an LCD screen compared to an OLED one. It all really just comes down to personal preference, but in general, you can expect LCD panels to show more accurate and true to life colors, which may not necessarily be more pleasing to the eye. The second and perhaps the most important factor is the color gamut of the display in question. A color gamut or color space is a range of colors that a specific display is capable of showing. Almost all modern displays are capable of displaying the sRGB color space which has been the standard color space used in web content for years now. A lot of creative professionals make use of another color space known as Adobe RGB which has a larger pool of colors compared to sRGB and represents a lot of the colors that professional DSLRs and printers can reproduce. There's another newer wide gamut called DCI-P3 and there are a lot of displays today that support this color space. It started out as a standard for digital cinema as it was the color range that a cinema projector could reproduce. P3 is similar to Adobe RGB, however it extends more into the reds and yellows as opposed to the blues and greens. It's important to note that most displays will not fully cover 100% of the specified color spaces, resulting in inconsistent color reproduction in displays that are equally rated. So that is color space for you. If you edit and produce content on a wide gamut display with the intention of playing back or viewing on a more limited color space, then that image will look very different to what you published at the time of editing. This is where the challenge lies for content creators because I cannot count the amount of times I've edited a video or photo on my computer then uploaded it onto social media only to find that saturation, contrast and hue was all over the place when I viewed on my smartphone. In all fairness, perhaps there really is no solid solution to this problem as you cannot guarantee what your followers and the general public are viewing your content on. However, there are a few things you can do to somewhat alleviate the negative effects that can possibly occur. Number one is you can create your content in the most widely used sRGB color space. As limited as it may be, doing this will almost guarantee that everyone that is viewing your content is viewing an image that looks relatively similar to how you intended it to look because most displays support sRGB. Secondly, you can try to do your content creation on the most color accurate display or monitor you have where possible. For example, I use my 2013 MacBook Pro with Retina and I know that it can display 96% of the sRGB color space, whilst my 27 inch monitor can display 72% of Adobe RGB and 100% sRGB. Side by side, it's easy to see which display has richer and more accurate color reproduction. It is therefore worth my while to create all my content on my monitor in a sRGB color space because I know I'm getting all the colors the software can produce. By editing on my MacBook, I am effectively missing out on a small part of the colors in the editing software that the Retina display simply cannot reproduce. So a picture edited on the MacBook could potentially look more vibrant on the monitor. So there you have it folks, that is color space and display technology as simple as possible. Please keep in mind the infinite amount of possibilities that can occur with color reproduction here due to the fact that all displays have different characteristics. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as turn on notifications for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.